Hey everyone, William Cosentino. Welcome back to another show, Q&A show. Today I want to talk to you guys and gals about a topic on entry level basics and what is required from employers if you're new to the, uh, the industry and profession and you're just starting to get into a job and starting to look for one. What are some of the things that they're looking for and from, from a real life experience as opposed to what you see in the job requirements when you're looking at a, a job opening, okay? So from my experience, this is what I'm going to break down for you and, uh, and kind of give you a little bit of background on, on all of it. So here's the deal. The, the job requirements that are usually in a job description are most of the time, 99% of the time, way over exaggerated, meaning you have a list of this much information on on the job requirements that you know it's just it's really out of touch it's unrealistic and so a lot of times you know just scan over it and and just forget about it really because in most cases you're not going to have every single thing on that list none of us do i mean that's just the fact of the matter so here's here's the important part Let's start off with some of the things that you'll notice about every single job posting out there, and that is how do you how well how well do you work with people, and how are you in a team how are you as a, as, as a team player? That right there is one of the key factors that's going to play into you getting a job. Okay, um, they want to make sure that they have somebody that they can trust that they can you know, bring you into their, their culture and that you'll make, you'll, you'll be a good fit for them, that you will get along with people and that you're a people person, that you're a nice person. Um, it most, most employers want to see those assets, those skills and that personality first before anything. Okay. So you have to make sure that when you go in for an interview, if you get called in that you're, you're on your best. I mean, you've got to be, you've got to just, exude confidence in yourself and and that you're the right person for that job based on you know your people skills that you know how to work with people especially if you're going to be in a job role such as like customer service or technical support help desk that type of uh, position there when you're working with external customers okay so if you're say you're a technical support person for a software vendor you're going to be working with people that are that have purchased the product, all right? So you've got to know how to work with people, and that's where people skills become involved. And it's all, and it also applies to internally. So if you're if you're the person behind the behind the scenes, you know, doing the you know server work or whatever it is, you have to you have to know how to interact with with your teammates. So um, number one skill is people and teamwork. Okay. Second thing that you will see that's pretty common is documentation. You have to be able to document what you're doing on a daily basis, especially if you're in the capacity of some type of administrator of the organization, okay? Um, change management is a huge thing, especially in large organizations and really in all. You have to really document every single thing you do so that if something blows up, you can go back and say, okay, this is what we did prior to the disaster, okay? Uh, you have to know what happened. And this applies to any role in IT, okay? You've got to understand how to document and document properly. I know that there's a lot of people out there that say, you know what, I'm in IT, I work with computers, uh, writing is not my best skill. Well, you know what? <laughs> then you need to get better at it, okay? You need to learn how to write. I mean, especially if, if, uh, if English is your first language, and mostly speaking to you folks here in the, in the United States, um, and really, I mean, wherever you are in the world, if, 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 if the language you speak is your first language, you should know how to write, okay? So you need to really present something in writing because... I'll tell you something, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen, okay? And, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If you didn't document what you've done, nobody knows what you have done, okay? 
So in someone else's perspective, they're just saying, well, what did this guy do besides push buttons on a computer or whatever they're pushing buttons on? So your documentation is proof that you're actually doing your job role. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's another uh, expectation of the employer. It's another metric, if you will, that, they're, that they are looking at for what you're doing and measuring you. Okay, And having proper documentation that's legible, that your grammar is, is, you know, is good. We're not asking you to be authors here, but one of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm looking at documentation and I, I can't understand what was done. Okay, it just, it just drives me insane when somebody doesn't know how to write properly. You know, when they do run on sentences, there's no paragraphs, uh, you know, there's periods where there shouldn't be, there's commas, there's exclamation. I mean, it's just, there, there's, there's a reason why they taught us how to write in, in school, okay? So take this seriously, people. Trust me on this, okay? Writing skills will go a long way. I don't care if you're, if you're just a network administrator or a help desk person. Just, you need to know how to write, all right? Next thing, let's kind of go on to the basics now of the job role. We got the two key skills out, out, out of here, which is people and documentation. The next thing they want is the basics, all right? And there's a lot of job descriptions out there where they just say, Windows basics. Well, really, what, what does that mean, right? I mean, that, that doesn't really tell us a lot. So, if you're just getting started, you, you've got to have some of the fundamentals of technology, okay? A lot of what I'm talking about here today has to do with people that are going for systems admin, network administration, help desk, you know, the, the, the people that are working with the with the the software and the hardware themselves, okay? Um, if we're talking about, you know, if we're talking about programming, software development, that's a little bit different as far as the basics, but I mean, a lot of this will apply to that as well. I, I can probably do a video on that uh, later on. But let's just say that you're, you're, you want to be a Windows administrator, you want to be a systems administrator, you know, you want to do networking. Most jobs, the entry level stuff will be Windows administration because Microsoft runs the world right now. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So let's start off with the basics of the Windows operating system. You need to understand how to navigate through Windows, you know, do the, do the basic stuff, you know, how to look at some of the logging in Windows that's built in like the event viewer logs and, and, and just some of the basic stuff. How do you get around to the control panel? How do you look at your networking? How do you look at the firewall? Just some of the basics about Windows, you know, even troubleshooting the boot up process, getting into the BIOS. So there's there's a lot of that that stuff there that, that you, you really need to have a grasp on. I mean, you don't have to know in-depth knowledge, but when you go in for an interview, you'll probably be questioned on some of this, this, this these basics of, of, of just Windows, okay? Next thing is, is networking, right? Networking is the, in, in the grand scheme of things, it's how the entire ecosystem of the environment talk to each other. That's how we network, you know, the computers and how they talk to each other using, using you know, TCP IP, which is your, you know, that's how, that's the internet protocol, that's transmission protocol, that's basically how they communicate. That's the language it talks, you know, DNS. What's DNS? Domain name system. So you have to understand what DNS is as well. DHCP, basic ping command. You know, can I ping this computer? Is it talking to the network? You know, just some of those basic things and, and you know, uh, just understanding that stuff. I wrote down here the A plus and, and the net plus certifications. I want to skip down here for a second because I, I think that these are good starting points for, for people like yourself that are just getting into the field because it will give you a really good idea. The, it will give you the basics. It will basically teach you all of this stuff here so that you, that you know some of those fundamentals going into the job. So it's, it's a really good starting point if you're, already not, if you're not in a, a, a program already. 
Okay, so say that you're, you, you haven't decided on a college or a degree or something like that, and you just want to go straight for certifications, I would start there to get your fundamentals because it will teach you the entire realm of all of this stuff. Okay, so going back to that, um, email. We got to know what's going on with email, right? I mean, uh, that's, that's part of what we do. I mean, email is our main method of uh, communication these days. So we need to understand email flow and configuration. So if you're on a help desk position or uh, you know technical support position, you need to understand. Okay, <clears throat> if this person's not getting email, why not? You know, most companies are using Microsoft Exchange Server, and you know that's the main exchange or that's the main mail um, application. Okay, to keep it simple, then you need to understand how these email clients like Outlook, Microsoft Outlook, again everything is Microsoft these days, um, their competitor if you want to say would be would be Domino and uh, IBM Notes, okay so that would be the other email client but 99% of the companies out there are going to be using uh, Microsoft Exchange so that's why the focus is Microsoft here. So going back to you know how is the the Outlook client communicating with the Exchange server? You know is it uh, if it's internal, you're not going to be using SMTP, POP, or IMAP. That's going to be for, you know, for basically home computers that are connecting into their domain hosting service or whatever. But you need to understand these this terminology, SMTP, POP, IMAP, just so you get a good grasp on really what that does and, and how the, the Outlook client, the email client communicates with the Exchange server or the mail server, whatever that is to get to send and receive email. All right. The basic understanding of what Active Directory is for Windows. Okay, Active Directory, the main this is the this is the heart of a network. Okay? This is the heart of a domain, okay, is what they call it. You need to get a, a, a little bit of understanding of really what Active Directory is because all of this ties into it. Okay? This all ties into what Active Directory is. So understand what that is. All right, start start studying what Active Directory is. The basics of a firewall. Okay, the firewall could be the Windows built-in firewall into say Windows, you know, Windows Seven, whatever Windows operating system it is, and uh, even the Microsoft um, software um, firewall is called. Um, well, it used to be called ISA. Now it's TMG, but uh, that's that's Microsoft's version. And then you have your third-party hardware vendors that, you know, they're basically, they're, it's an actual piece of hardware that plugs into your network, and those are sold by companies like Cisco, the big one, Sonic, Barracuda, and there's, there's a couple others out there as well. Understand what firewalls do, what their functionality is, why we use them. Um, so we need to keep an eye on that and, uh, and, and study what a firewall is. And then just some of your computer hardware, okay, the guts, what's inside what's inside the box, what's inside the server, what's inside the PC, you know, you've got your system board or, or also known as your motherboard, you've got your RAM which is your memory, you got the video card, NIC is the is your network card or network interface card, you know, all the different components inside the box, you want to understand what that is and, and, and what they do uh, in case you're in that capacity as a job, um, in, in your job role, you know, my, you might be a PC tech, you're going to be hands dirty in there, I'll tell you right now. So going back to the A plus and net plus certifications will teach you all this stuff. And I've said it on previous videos, go get a uh, go get an old computer, start ripping it apart and playing with it, put it back together and start learning some of this stuff and uh, and get down some of these core basics and, uh, and this way you've got a better chance at, at getting in. You know, Again, when you're looking at the job roles and the job functions on a on a uh, you know online or wherever it is you're looking at jobs, don't let that stuff scare you. The the list that goes on and on and on. Just understand that as long as you've got some of the basics and you can go in there with a level of confidence that you know what I might not know the answer to this, but Google is one click away. Okay, I can find the answer. Okay, they, that's really what they want to understand. They want to know, do you have these people skills? Can you document? Do you have the ability to go and search? 
Uh, you know, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Just go in there and knock it out. It's not really a, about everything that you know or what's really up here. There's a, they're, they're really looking for someone that they can count on. Okay, someone that they know, like, and trust. That's really what it boils down to. Once you get into the job role, then you can learn. Okay, I, I, I'll say it again. Most of what you learn will be on the job. It's just a matter of getting in and, uh, and getting your foot in the door and proving yourself. And I trust that you could do that because some of what you're learning from myself. And I, I, I really appreciate the questions. I want to keep the questions coming in. Let me know down below if this video has helped you out. If this is your first time here, welcome. Um, you know, if you haven't subscribed, please please do so so that you're alert of what's going on. I, I would love the thumbs up as well on these videos. I appreciate everyone that's watching these videos continuously. I, I appreciate every single one of you. Um, subscribe, click the link below as well so I can send you something here. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Hope this helped you out and hope you're having an awesome freaking day. We'll talk to you later. See ya.